Tonight, the president back at the White House, continuing his fight with COVID-19. This was the extraordinary scene earlier. President Trump, surgical mask on, giving a fist pump as he exited Walter Reed. And then, despite experts saying he's still contagious, as the president entered the White House, the mask came off. This is someone who is arguably the most prominent COVID patient in the world right now. Something like that um, not only shows a relative disconnect to the severity of the situation, but he's, he has the potential to be in a real teaching moment, and that was a fumble. A jaw-dropping move as ABC News has now confirmed 17 others who were either on the White House grounds or in contact with Trump himself have tested positive as well. His doctor, Sean Conley, told reporters that his entire medical staff approved Trump's discharge. Though he may not entirely be out of the woods yet, the team and I agree that all our evaluations, and most importantly, his clinical status, support the president's safe return home. When asked about his brain function, given that a third of COVID hospitalizations show neurological impacts, Dr. Conley pointed to Trump's social media posts. His mental status, can you talk to about whether he has any neurological symptoms? No, I think you've seen the videos uh, and now the tweets, and you'll see him uh, shortly. You know, uh, he's, he's back, yeah. Among the torrent of tweets posted today, President Trump reportedly filmed this message moments after he walked inside the White House. Don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. I think we had all hoped given what he has been through, that he would finally take this virus seriously. And I think many of us found that tweet disappointing. To date, the United States has over 7 million COVID cases, over 200,000 deaths, and 30,000 people hospitalized. According to ABC News analysis, 33 states and Puerto Rico are seeing an increase in cases. The seven-day national average is now the highest it's been since August 22nd. More than 10,000 Americans across the country have died in the past two weeks alone. People like beloved coach Derek Leppard, or Lep from Olith, Kansas. Marner Saw, a leader in Minnesota's Burmese refugee community, and infectious disease specialist Dr. Rebecca Shadowin of Bowling Green, Kentucky, who helped keep her community protected from diseases like the coronavirus. Her son Jesse and daughter Catherine are now taking a road trip with their dad in her memory. A mom would have said the same thing that she said anytime she saw someone not wear a mask. It's a stupid choice, it's negligent, and you're just putting others at risk. Since the president's hospitalization, it's been a weekend of mixed messages, including conflicting statements from the president's medical team. The medical team's had a real credibility problem. Dr. Sean Conley, as his doctor, came out and gave flatly wrong information. He's always seems to be putting the best possible spin on things. Uh, and he acknowledged, actually, that he has a patient that wants him to put uh, the best possible spin on things. So I think there's a, a real question now when the doctor comes out, when the medical team comes out and says the president's doing fine, you have to wonder, are they really telling us the truth this time when they weren't telling us the truth before? After denying the president received oxygen, his medical team admitted today that two rounds of supplemental oxygen were administered as a precautionary measure. It wasn't required. He wasn't short of breath. He wasn't looking ill. It was more of us trying to uh, anticipate needs and see how he'd respond and in both cases. Um, it came right off. If you look at the Infectious Disease Society of America criteria, someone with severe COVID-19 is someone who has an oxygen saturation 94% or lower on room air. And we heard that that was, in fact, the president's condition over the weekend. Still, they remain tight-lipped on other crucial details, like the health of his lungs. So you're actively not telling us what those lung scans showed, just to be clear. So um, there are... HIPAA rules and regulations that uh, restrict me in uh, sharing certain things uh, for his safety and his and his own health. That was one of the most odd parts of the press conference is that he shared some very specific information. He actually shared the president's heart rate. 
but then when it came to his x-rays and CAT scans, all of a sudden invoked HIPAA and said that he's no longer, he can't do this because of HIPAA regulations. We want to know how sick the president is. How serious is this? Remember where we started last week? I mean, it feels like a decade ago, but we had a tough week last week for Donald Trump. First, the New York Times publishes his tax returns. His former campaign manager, still a senior advisor on the campaign, uh, uh, threatened to take his own life. And then we had that debate, which everybody agreed was a disaster. But Donald Trump and his team knew they needed to turn the corner. They needed something different, a different storyline to move this forward. They didn't really have on their wish list Donald Trump getting coronavirus. While it's nearly impossible to know how the president was exposed to the virus, some are pointing to this event. Last week, hundreds of supporters jammed into the Rose Garden as President Trump announced his Supreme Court nominee, Amy Coney Barrett. There are several people who were at that event who have now tested positive. So far, 11 people in attendance have tested positive, including the First Lady, Kellyanne Conway, and two Republican senators. The Rose Garden is certainly the big one because we have the visual from that, right? You can see that there is no social distancing. There are big crowds. There's a set part of the event that goes indoors, which completely flies in the face of everything we've been hearing from the CDC and the White House task force for months. Former New Jersey governor and ABC News contributor Chris Christie seen at the event hugging others. He would then spend the next few days with the president in preparation for the first presidential debate. Christie has since tested positive. From what we know, five of the nine people involved in the debate prep have tested positive, including his top aide, Hope Hicks, and campaign manager, Bill Stepien. Then at Tuesday's debate in Cleveland, the president and Joe Biden maintained social distancing, never shaking hands. The rules to get into the venue, you had to get a test that day and wear a mask. The only exception were for those in the campaign who could show a negative result from days prior. Testing is not a prevention strategy, it's a surveillance strategy. And so those tests can have as high as a 50% false negative rate. That is not a green light to take your mask off. In the front row, Dr. Jill Biden, seen with her face covered. A sharp contrast to the president's family, seen without masks, despite the venue rules. At one point, a health worker approaching them with masks, a staffer rebuffing them. On Wednesday evening, the president was back on the campaign trail, holding an outdoor rally in Duluth, Minnesota, at no point wearing a mask. On November 3rd, Minnesota will decide whether we end this pandemic, defeat the virus, and return to record prosperity. Either way, we're returning. Many in the crowd, mask-free as well. But the president cut that rally short. Even before he tested positive, some of the president's top advisors told us that they had observed him seeming fatigued, seeming tired. Some told us that they, at that point, were worried that he could have potentially been exposed to COVID-19. And on that flight home aboard Air Force One, Hicks started to feel ill. ABC News White House reporter Jordan Phelps was also on that flight. As I was getting off the plane, I bumped into Hope Hicks, who was exiting from a different part of the plane. Uh, but it was striking because at the time she was wearing a mask, she had her hair pulled back, and she had switched out of her heels apparently into flats. And we've since learned that she quarantined during that flight home aboard the presidential aircraft. Hicks testing positive for COVID-19, the White House learning of the results Thursday morning. But by the time the results came in, the president was moving forward with his plans of holding a fundraiser at his club in Bedminster, New Jersey. A number of top aides who were close to Hicks the day before were not on board. Outside the event, video showing a drive through security screening tent. The White House has since supplied the New Jersey Department of Health with the names of at least 206 individuals who attended the event. By Thursday night, the president was talking about Hicks's positive COVID test result. You know Hope very well. She's fantastic, and she's done a great job. I just went out for a test. They just do it. It'll come back later, I guess. And uh, the first lady also, because we spend a lot of time with Hope and others. So we'll see what happens. However, we now know that by the time he did this interview, the president had already tested positive from a rapid test, but was waiting a more accurate test tweeting out his results shortly after midnight. 
But as the president recovers, the list of those testing positive grows. Today, White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany hey guys, how are you? announcing she and two of her staffers also tested positive. With so many Americans already voting and Election Day less than a month away, Trump's diagnosis now flaming the already contentious campaign season. Biden, who has said he has continuously tested negative for the virus, has carried on with his campaign, tonight appearing at an NBC News town hall. Anybody who contracts the virus by essentially saying masks don't matter, social distancing doesn't matter, I think is, is, is responsible for what happens to them. As for whether President Trump's campaign will be sidelined, Often people do well early on, look good, and then day five, day seven, even out to day 10, take a sudden and dramatic turn for the worse. And so depending on the timeline of the president, we're really going to have to pay close attention all week into the weekend. The reality is that trying to keep Donald Trump inside, not going out, not doing anything, that's going to be mission impossible. I'm actually quite curious if he, if he sticks to the full 14-day quarantine. Um, but he wants to get out there. He is definitely in the fight of his political life, and he is his best spokesperson. The second debate, scheduled for October 15th, President Trump's 14th day in quarantine.